Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today we're going to do Rye Wharf version 2. So let's get that ball rolling, let's roll the intro, let's see how we get on. Hi everybody and welcome back. Now as I said at the start this is the second version of the same scene. Now you remember last week I did the first version of Rye Wharf in Rye Harbour and I put a link to it up there or is it up there? I'll never work it out. Um, but there will be a link to that video there if you haven't seen that one suggest you have a look at that one too. But in this episode I'm approaching the same scene in a very different way. I'm using a different paper, a different aspect and a different dynamic and hopefully we will have a completely different version of it. So that's the plan and I think I pulled the first one off quite well. Hopefully I have no trouble in pulling this one off as well. So join me now as we get underway. The first part of course is the drawing. Okay, I'm just going to pop up a quick picture of last week's uh, photo and also the resulting painting, just so you get an idea of the changes and having them side by side so you can sort of compare them. And I think you'd agree that the dynamic of this picture, albeit the same scene, is vastly different than it was last week. So for a kickoff, we're going to start off with quite a low horizon.
So now we've got a lot of information to get into this last part. So let's get on with that now. We're going to look at where that is there. We're going to come back a little way and we're going to suggest the first part of our bank. We can now go on and carry on and get the next section of this picture done and for that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying ink now i normally use the uh, atramentus ink i don't know where that's available from in the usa although i think it is a us product i can't be too sure um, but in the uk you can buy this from a company called pure pens so they supply that they also supply the noodler ink which is equally as good now in here i have also got some of the pelican drawing ink now this is a bottle i've had for about 35 years um, and i've barely touched it because i've always gone for another ink but i've come back to this recently and this to me is the full back position this is to me the original sort of bottle of drawing ink so we've got that to hand but what I've got in my pens, in my pens, and that's what I'm going to be using today, are these. These are the Noodler pens, and they come with lovely full-on ink reservoirs that will take quite a bit. I do, however, tend to get a dirty nib every time I pull this open. Wow, today, not so bad at all. Gotta, gotta say, that's not so bad. But I wanted to draw. Now, you can approach this in different ways. You can paint the ink on. Where you want it you can use something like a stick or a matchstick sharpener and i've done those things in the past for you or indeed a dropper but today i want to use an ink now if you do not have this type of nib then please go out don't worry you do not have to go out and buy one of these are about 12 15 pounds again from pure pens or from noodler in america but you can buy something like a pigment liner from stadler uh, and they work just as well. So you don't have to go and get all this. You can use something like this. down there all right now let's carry on with this cab there is a little bit of light and i want to save that if i can and suggest that out there we've got the back and we've got the shape of the cab so i sort of lost that a little bit let's just put that back in Thank you. 
So through here we have got the river. Let's just go from this side up. We've got the nice edge of the river. Then we've got the mud. Like so. That's the edge of the mud. Now you can make that a little bit more varied, I think. And crack in there and just change that dynamic. And then we've got a top of the bank. And then we've got our trees shrubs in the near distance they break off there and come back up again there then we have another field i'm saying that comes through about there and then we've got the more distant trees very very simple little marks that i'm making just little taps of marks i'm not trying to draw a tree i'm merely indicating that with the ink that there is something going on there I think we've got a nice ink drawing i think we're really set to go on so i'm going to call it a day oh no i'm not quite calling it a day. i've forgotten this little fella down here let's just put our little mark boy in sitting on the top of the water there okay that'll be good it should have gone into the bank more i'm not worried about that right pen away what i will do in a moment or two is i'm going to erase over the whole of this area once I'm sure this is dry, take off any graphite that's still there and get prepared for the uh, next part of this painting, which is adding the washes, the sky, and all the other parts and, uh, that we need to complete this painting. So. Okay, so what I've got is my big number 18 Escoda. This is the Aquario. But what I'm going to be doing is painting this very much in the way of Hilda. So I want to put on a nice, simple, raw sienna wash. Now, I've cleaned my palette, as I always do, but a lot of people don't do that. You don't have to do that. I only pretty much do it for you guys that you see all my color mixes fresh each time. So I'm going to make a lot of this, and it's very, very weak in terms of color. And I'm just going to come on and put a very simple wash ultramarine violet in here a little bit more ultramarine too slightly bluer using two of the colors very very weak wash again and i'm going to put that into the top part of the mud Right, now while we've got this going on, I'm going to come in with some cobalt blue. I'm just going to come in here now and put in a lovely blue light to our river. Let that settle down. Okay, so where do I go now? I'm going to add in and make a bit of a green. I'm going to use some Aureoli modding, mix them into that purple blue color that we've got here. You can see immediately that turns to a very cool sludgy gray green color and i just and it's still weak again i just want to pop that into place as the distant trees come in with some more aureolin if you want to and then we can come in we can drop in a little bit of fresher green there take that all the way through this area like so and we've got our grass in the distance and we've got our grass in the foreground. Okay, everybody. Well, that's dried off now and I'm quite happy with the way that's gone. I love this granulation around here. Beautiful on this mud. Cool. 
and warm effects on the mud. I love it. Now the sky I'm going to do is very much that of like a Roland Hilda style. I've done plenty of them as you know but I do enjoy playing around with them and everyone is different and it's just a case of having a go and see what happens. Now the sky in the photograph is still overcast but I've already done one of those so that's why I'm going to change the dynamic of this sky. We've got a lovely sunshiny day anyway so I think I can get away with it and I'm going to come in with some of the neutral tint. This is the Schmincke one and it's a weak solution. It's got the redness in it unlike the other version which is quite a blue color and I want to come in with a very soft wash over some of this sky And now I'm going to come in with some cobalt blue this time. I'm going to leave off of the phthalo blue on this occasion. I'm just going to be using some cobalt blue. I'm going to come in with a lovely sky. come in now with another layer of tint now it's the same layer but it's going to come in a little stronger and create some of the bases to some of this cloud There you go, a bit of cobalt. And I'm going to choose a different color, I think. I'm just going to come in with a little bit of the orange. I just want it now. I'm going to go back to the yellow. I just wanted it to be a little paler, a little lighter as that comes down through here. I'm suggesting that there is a bit of sky running through there. And from that, we can then add in some more cloud structure. A little bit more of the tint can pop in. I love all that broken edge through there. That's quite interesting. Creates a nice sky dynamic. Quite pleased with that, I've got to say. Quite an interesting sky. I want it very, very weak. I don't want anything substantial. Part of me wants to just leave it alone. But I just want to put in the suggestion of that you get these little cloud forms way off in the distance. I'm working my way through and breaking up, leaving little areas. It does help. I think overall with the uh, look, especially when it comes to painting in maybe a bit of body color further into this painting. But the clouds get thinner, they get smaller, the further away they go from us. All right, so where do we turn our attentions to now? We're gonna look at some darkening up of colors. So what we're gonna do is things like the a heap here I use a little bit of cool red we use this one in the past and we're going to add to that a bit of cobalt so we're going to make a dirty dull violet color I'm going to put that in that's a little bit too close to the clouds behind so I'm going to warm that up slightly I think little bit of magenta and a little bit of sleeping beauty there we go I just want to add in a little extra detail this is another layer it's so adding a little bit of shadow to some of those very distant trees way off there on the hillside 
Right, now I'm going to come in with some ultramarine blue. Again, it's some fresh paint that I've squeezed out. You can see how I'm drawing on that little bit. I want to put that there, very weak wash, but I'm going to add in a little bit of magenta just to give it that sort of violet. Now I keep doing too much magenta, look at that. So I need more of that blue mix. I don't want too much of it. I'm just going to make a little bit off the side. Thick paint, thinner paint, very weak paint, just by adding more water, but moving away from your source. And that way you still preserve. You don't make a whole sludgy mess. It's a good way of just moving away and just creating extra without using all your paint up. Put that lovely shadow section to the vessel in there. And I'm going to use some Thalo Blue and a little bit of the other just to mix it all up a little bit. and thick this one a little bit of the violet too and temper it down with a little bit of indigo just come in there with that deeper dark color okay leave that to dry and let's move on I think this is all dry. We're going to come in with our dark in here. We're going to use some of this as well. So let's come back in with some Indian red. Take it into the top there. We don't want to waste all that paint with using one color into the whole of the rest. So let's just use that and make that quite dark. Quite thick paint as well. Let's just come in here now with the side of our wharf building. I'm going to use a little bit of red in here now and I'm just going to come in here very carefully and paint in the stern section. I want to leave that little bit of line that we had from before. Put that down there. Let that come in there. There's quite a dark object in there up on the side of the vessel. Can we come in with a weaker shadow, maybe a little touch of cobalt blue into that, and just run that through underneath all that superstructure of the vessel. And I'm going to come in with some more blue now. And this is quite a bit strong. I'm actually going to add a little bit of cobalt to that, just a little bit. Right, okay, let's get a color on. We have neglected our foreground green, so let's look at that. So for that color, I'm gonna come in again with another mix. I'm gonna use some of that lovely cobalt, um, I think it's cobalt turquoise, and I'm gonna use some oreolin into that. It makes a very acidic, lively green, but to that I can temper it. I can add that color into this blue or this indigo mix and create that dull color yet again. I can come back in and I can add in maybe some phthalo and put that into that mix, making it very dull and gingy. Look at that. We're having lots of greens happening. We can add some aureolin into that phthalo mix and we create yet another green color. 
So first and foremost then, let's put on a paler green color, a little bit lighter, a little bit wishier. All right, so I'm gonna leave that to dry now. I don't want to do too much to this, except I'm going to put in maybe some warmer colors. I'm going to use a little bit of the Sienna that we had, a little bit of the Indian Red, mix the two areas together, maybe a little yellower, a little more of the Sienna in there. Don't want it too strong a color, so pick up a bit of water. And then just come in, and I think probably a smaller brush too. Just come in here and just pop in some warm values on some of the sides of these stones that are in the mud. Let those dry up and while we're waiting for all that let's come and use some of this darker very thick paint. There is this is probably like cream and uh, we're going to come in here we're going to pop in that lovely dark on the banks of the edge of the river. We're going to put a little bit of dark up into that area. There's a bit of a thicket going on up there. Just want to put that in. And equally, there's a little bit of dark transitions through here. I think it's part of this area here. I'm going to use that anyway as the excuse. A little bit more red into some of that. Just a bit more dead foliage or whatever. What I want to do, though, is add in a little more variation in here. That's too warm. I'm going to come in with a bit of the blue-violet colour. just want to suggest that there is some slight variation into some of this. I don't want it to look like an extra shadow. I just want it to look like a softer light coming from this heap. All right, so what's left to do? Well, we're going to put in our darks now. We're going to come in with some sepia into our remaining indigo add to the indigo you can use Payne's gray equally or you can use the uh, neutral tint from Daniel Smith all very very similar in sort of color in terms of dark cool colors All right, we're going to leave it at that. And then one last thing, we need some lovely vermilion, nice vermilion color. And we're going to put in our boy, our lovely marker boy. Now it's going to be a deeper red there and a nice dark base to it. And then I'm just going to ease off of the throttle, put in a little bit of fresh red just on one side. There we go. Okay, so what's left to do is a bit of gouache. So all I'm going to do is dip that into there. I see a little bit of pale blue that needs to go on one or two of these things. So I'm just going to try and suggest that we got a little bit of form 
on one or two structures nothing too serious you can't put too much in because it's not going to really show up to be quite fair a little bit of light into that a bit of light onto that Okay, it's very, very superficial. It does suggest, I'm not sure if I like that, but it does suggest that there is um, some metal work on that roof. Just briefly, and just suggest scratch around with that area. A little more water, make that move, make that soften up in that area. Still want the roof very light, but I felt that I didn't like those marks too much. I'm going to leave that like that. I think that still works and we can get away with that. These extra bits, that little bit of dark green through there just adds interest to that side of the bank and the top of the mud. I'm going to leave that to be. All right, now we're done. So to that point, I am just going to pick a place on the painting and put my signature as I normally do. Put that down here out of the way. Job, job. We're done. Okay, everybody, I had a lot of fun with this. I do hope you got something from it. Now, I think in conclusion, you can agree that both versions are extremely different. The dynamic in the first one was all about the boat and the area immediately around the vessel, and the sky was merely a supporting act. In this one, uh, oh, sorry, in the first one also I used rough paper and just drew the image. In this one, however, I changed the perspective completely. I put the inference on the sky and much less immediately as a supporting act, all this information in the foreground. So this was what I was really interested in. This just makes the picture. And I used a hot press paper, of course, and I used not only pencil, but I then finished the drawing off as an ink drawing, so I made an ink and wash painting. I think you'd agree that the dynamic was very, very different. But it's the same scene. Uh, I've just done it twice in two different approaches. So I do hope that that has given you something to think about and something to move on with in your own painting when you're looking at a scene, how many different ways you may use that scene to create a piece of work. And that's what I tried to show you. So with all that said and done, I catch each and every one of you in the next video. Okay, everybody, well, that concludes this tutorial. Now, you now have both versions, one and two of Rye Wolf to look at and enjoy. I do hope you get something from both of them, and I do hope that at some point in the future, you have a go at it and put your versions up on the Painting with Paul apps uh, channel over on Facebook. Now, I'd love to see them uh, see you there and love to see the results of your efforts from my demonstrations there. That'd be fantastic. And don't forget, you can nip on over to my Patreon and download the reference for this and version one free of charge. You do not need to be a patron to do that. Just go over there, download it and use it to learn from and create your own versions of this in, in the fullness of time. That would be awesome. But nevertheless, while you're over there, why don't you check out the, the Patreon? It 
doesn't cost you anything from three five or ten dollars a month so much on offer well over a hundred of videos on their full length fully narrated and there is also a very private community page where you can ask questions stay in touch with me and other patrons and get the answers that you seek so have a look at that and i'd love to welcome you all on board as my latest patron and while we're talking about that may i just say a great thanks to all my patrons that exist so far all of you who have come on to support me, support my channel, both old and recent, I couldn't do all of this without you guys. So it really is important to have your patronage and your support. And it does mean to say that I can carry on creating content, not just for YouTube, but for you guys in particular on my Patreon. So thanks for that and thanks for the support. And while I'm on all of these sort of subjects, why not consider subscribing to the channel? The channel only grows with the interaction of the people who watch it. And I love to get my videos out there to so many more people. At the moment, we reach so many. But with your support, your help by subscribing, by giving it the thumbs up, and also by adding uh, sort of comments underneath each video, and indeed sharing it to friends. By doing all of these things, you interact with my channel and that tells the YouTube algorithm that it's a channel that is worth supporting and worth pushing out there to more people. So it can only happen with your help. I, cre I create the content, but it only gets out there with your support. So please, please, please do all those things. Subscribe, bell icon, notifications tab, comment, share, all of the above. Thank you so much if you do that. It'd be so uh, awesome and respected. Thank you so much for that. Anyway, so I am now rambling. I do apologize. But before I go any further, let me just wish each and every one of you all the very best wherever you are. Enjoy your painting. Stay safe. Take care. I catch you each and every one of you in the next video next Friday. Take care. Bye bye. Hi, guys. Welcome back. As I said at the start. Hi, guys. Welcome back. And welcome back to this version, second part of this version of the second version of, no, back to part two of version two of the rise. I'll start that again, that didn't work out. Harry, <laughs> excuse me, Let's start again then, of the Rye Wharf tutorial, part two. And in, no to part two of part two, part two. <laughs> mm. everybody and welcome back to the version two <laughs> that's what i should have said